do. And then I am going to share my screen here. Actually, I think I'll go in here first. Okay, when I go into um, Ivy Learn, this is what I'm seeing. <laughs> and see, there's a Zoom link right here. So that's what I had clicked on. It took me to here, but I'm sure that looks different for you all. So, and then I was trying to add some modules and it's saying that it's hidden to students. So um, I use, I teach at IUS full time and we use, we call it Canvas over there. They call it Ivy Learn, but it's basically the same and I can't seem to get it to work the same. So I'm gonna have to contact some. Um, but in the meantime, I'll continue emailing things to you until I can get this open. Um, but the syllabus is in here. Yep. And uh, you can click here to download a copy of it. And then what I did is I just took a screenshot of our calendar and just, you know, plopped it in right here so you can see it. Um, so we're already a day behind, but I'm going to cover 1.2 today. And then I'm going to try to get 1.3, 1.4, and 1.5 you know, mixed in next week if I can. Um, the other thing I had asked, um, I'm hoping that this link works for you all when you click on the My Lab and Mastering, it should take you. Well, I've already logged in. So when you go here, I'm not exactly sure what it looks like for you the first time, but it may have you do something. But when you click there, it should take you into the My Math Lab class, which is here. And earlier, like about an hour and a half ago, I went ahead and assigned the first chapter of assignments. And you can see the due dates are here. Um, I have also set it up that if you don't meet the due date, you can still work on the assignment beyond the due date, but it'll be um, a 20% reduction in your grade or 20% on any, any question you haven't finished yet. So I've got that set up. Um, so um, the way I'm going to do this, and I'm going to switch to this, is I don't know how to get this out of my screen. Let's go down there. There we go. Um, can you see my screen okay? Yeah. You see the PowerPoint? Okay, so I'm just going to go. I don't see a PowerPoint. You don't see the chapter one, section two? No, ma'am. Uh -huh. What are you still seeing? <laughs> the math lab still. Oh, okay. Well, hang on. That's weird. I'm also seeing the math lab. Okay. Um, yeah, there's still the math lab for me as well. And, um, I just went to the math lab. Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> there's chapter one. Okay. Now you can see it. Okay. <laughs> I have used Zoom before for meetings, but I have never taught a class over Zoom. So this is my first time. So I apologize if I'm screwing up. Um, let me introduce myself. My name's April Robinson. You can call me April. I am very comfortable with students calling me by my first name. Um, if you're uncomfortable with that, you can call me the math goddess because I like to go by that term. Um, or maybe the Pythagorean princess, that one works well too. Um, I actually worked at Ivy Tech full time from 2006 until 2014. Um, I was actually the math department chair for the last five years that I was there. So I'm very familiar with Ivy Tech. Um, I left there to go teach at IUS and I just finished my sixth year at IUS. So. And now I'm back teaching as an adjunct at Ivy Tech. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in mathematics that I earned in 1987 from Eastern Kentucky University. 
And then I earned my master's degree in education at Indiana University in 2000. Um, I was trying to post a, a video of myself and I couldn't get that to work in this Canvas class or Ivy Learn. Sorry, I got used to calling it Ivy Learn. Uh, it's a little different. Things have changed a little bit over there. But um, let's see, I'm a mother of three. I have a 22 year old who is a senior at IUS. Um, she's majoring in math and economics. And then I have an 18 year old who just graduated high school and he started at U of L last week and he's majoring in political science. And then I have a 16 year old who's at Floyd Central High School. And he's, we're just hoping he graduates. <laughs> so um, let's see, that's all I can really tell you right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and start teaching. Um, does anybody have any quick questions? About anything? Okay, let me see if I can move this down to the bottom so it's out of my view. There we go. All right, I have a quick question. Yes. Uh, do we need the textbook to access MATLAB? No. And actually, there's an electronic copy of the textbook in my math lab. Um, and I'm also going to make a video for that, too, that I'll put in Ivy Learn so you can watch. Um, it'll be easier than me trying to do it in class, and that way you can watch it over and over. But I'll actually do a screen screen capture of me working through some um, my math lab stuff and showing you where the textbook is, showing you how to get some help in there, um, what it looks like when you get an answer right, what it looks like when you get an answer wrong, um, how you can email me directly from my math lab. So, okay. Okay. Uh, uh, April, I uh, originally uh, started this class in the spring of 2019, but because of the COVID, uh, the Zoom wasn't completely 100% uh, yet, and uh, I just couldn't, I couldn't follow, and the Zoom would break up, and it, it was impossible. Okay. Uh, but I purchased the, uh, the, uh, the online learning uh, aid last year, and I can get to it now, uh, but do you think that should still be good until the, the, this semester's over? Are you talking about the My Math Lab? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I think it's good for the life of the book. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, if you have to take a class over, at least that's the way it used to be when I was at Ivy Tech. If we took a class over, you didn't have to pay for the My Math Lab again. And uh, the book from 2019, it has a different cover. Do, uh, is, do you think it's probably, I guess that says 10th edition. I'll check, but it, it does have a, a different cover on it, so. Yeah, we're on the 11th edition. To this oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I have. I, I think I have the 11th edition. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, I don't know if they've updated the actual, if, if there's been many changes, though. Usually when a tech, when a, <laughs> when a book company changes edition, they change the cover and they might switch chapter two to chapter three, or they might add some more problems. They do very little when they update it. It's just gotcha. how they make money, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. We're at their mercy. So um, if you do have trouble with it, let me know and I'll see what I can do for you. Um, I'll have to contact the new department chair and see uh, if there's a way to get you in the class because sometimes when they change the addition, that causes a problem. But just let me know if you have trouble getting in, okay? No problem. Okay. All right, well, um, we're covering section two first and I went ahead and crossed out. Uh, there were four objectives where we're not going to be doing objective two, which is completing the square. You're welcome because that's a nightmare. But we're going to be solving quadratic equations by factoring, uh, by using the square root method, which they didn't put in here, and by using the quadratic formula. So those are the three methods. Um, a quadratic equation, let me grab my pen here. Um, I can tell that I have a quadratic equation because of that guy right there. If you have an X squared, that is a quadratic equation. And it seems confusing because quad, quad means four, but it's an X squared, okay? And then where the letters A, B, and C are, there's gonna be numbers there. 
Um, if we're lucky, they're all going to be whole numbers. <laughs> if we're not, they could be fractions. I'm pretty sure it's all whole numbers for you. But your ultimate goal is to figure out what X is. What number, when I put it where this X is and where this X is, what number, when I put it in there and do all the math, does it make it equal zero? That's what we're looking for. Um, yes. I hate to bother, I mean, like, interrupt you, but it's not showing your screen at all for me. It's just saying that you've started screen sharing. You can't see the where it says definition? No, it just says uh, April Robinson has started screen sharing. Okay, is anybody else having that problem? You can't see? No. 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 I can see your screen just fine. Okay, let me, I'm going to click stop share and then I'm going to try to do it again. Share. And where's the PowerPoint? There's the PowerPoint and share. Can you see it now? No, it's weird. Hmm, but, are, but everybody else can see it okay? Yes. I say how that has to do with your Wi Fi. I can see it just fine. Yeah. I heard somebody say it might have to do with your Wi Fi. Yeah, that was me. I've had that My Wi Fi is fine. I have all bars. Hmm. I don't know then. Uh, I don't know. I am recording this, so you can watch it later. Or maybe try rejoining the Zoom call. That might work in fixing it. Re-entering the Zoom call? It's rejoining it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm not sure who I was talking to. The girl, I heard you. You might want to log out and log back in again. Okay. Um, so anyway, where was I talking? Okay, so um, we're going to st start by um, solving a quadratic equation by one of the many F words in math, factoring. <laughs> um, there's a lot of different ways to factor, and I actually have a handout that I'm going to post also with all the different ways on it. But when you're solving these things, there's something you have to remember, and that is if A times B equals zero, then either A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. If two things are multiplied together and the answer is zero, then one of them has to be zero. So when you create the factors and on this one here, this first one, all I'm gonna do is factor out an X and it's my cat, sorry. And when I factor out the X, I'm left with, whoa, that is really thick. I need to make that smaller. Okay. Um, I'm left with X plus six equals zero. So then the multiplication is happening right here between the X and the parentheses. So the X is like your A, and the X plus six is like your B right here. So that means either the X is my zero or the X plus six is my zero. <coughs> and then of course, this is one answer. And then over here, I'd have to solve it for X. So I would subtract six from both sides. Do you guys remember the old, what you do to one side of an equation, you gotta do to the other. And so to get rid of a plus six, I would balance it with a minus six, boom, cancels out. But you got to do it to the other side. And zero minus six is a negative six. If you were to plug those numbers back into, if I were to take this zero and plug it here and plug it here, that would be zero squared plus six times zero, which is zero plus zero, which is zero. So that one checks, okay? That was a bad check mark that one checks or this one checks and then if i plug in the negative six if i plug in negative six in here and here um that's going to be negative six squared plus six times negative six if you take a negative six and square it a negative times a negative is a positive so that's positive 36 plus and then six times negative 
positive <laughs> times a negative is a negative 36, and that's zero. So that one checks. They both get me the zero. So those are my two answers. And that's the other thing about a quadratic equation. Since it's an x squared, there should be two answers. If you had an equation with an x cubed in it, there should be three answers. If you had an equation with an x to the fourth, guess what? There'd be four, th four answers. So um, we're just doing two answers right now. Um, this other one over here is a little more complicated. First off, it's not set equal to zero. That's a problem. So um, you either have to get zero on the left side or zero on the right side. And technically it doesn't matter, but in my professional opinion, <laughs> it is always easier to factor or use the quadratic formula, which is coming up, when your x squared has a positive number in front of it. And right now it does. So I'm gonna leave the 2x squared on the left side and I'm gonna subtract over the x and subtract over the three. And then these cancel and leave me with a zero there. You have to get it equal to zero so that you can use this concept of if A times B is equal to zero, then either A is zero or B is zero. So you've got to set it equal to zero first. Now, this is a trinomial and you can try to factor it by what I call unfoiling or just doing it mentally. And this one's not too bad to do it mentally because you're starting with a two. You've got a two X squared. If you guys remember the FOIL method, it's a first, outsides, insides, and lasts. It's what you do when you multiply um, two binomials, but we're factoring, so we're unfoiling. But this two X squared, I'm gonna have to have a two X here and an X there. Those are my only choices. For the back end here, which is this minus three, that goes for last times last. And three is the prime number. I only have two choices, one and three, or I could put three and one. It depends. Your, let's see, I need another color. Hang on here. Your middle term has to add up to a negative one. There's a negative invisible one right here. So when you multiply your outsides and your insides together, it has to add up to negative one. And the way I set it up the first way where I put, let me erase this guy here, where I put the one and the three there, I would get six X here and one X there, which would either be seven or five. That's not working. So I'm gonna switch it. I'm gonna put the three here and the one there. So that would give me, I got three X in the middle and two X on the outside, which either adds up to five or subtracts to be one. Since you have a, let me highlight this here, a negative three, one of these has to be a positive and the other has to be a negative. So I'm gonna put the negative here and the positive there. And that gives me what I need. My outsides, when I multiply 2x times 1, that's a positive 2x. My insides, when I multiply negative 3 times x, that's a negative 3x. And these two things right here add up to the negative 1. Now that's doing it mentally. Um, later I have another example where I'm going to show you another method, which always works. But I don't really have room here, so I'll wait. <laughs> Um, so now that I've got it factored, my two possible answers are either the 2x minus 3 is a 0 or the x plus 1 is the 0. And now I got two more equations I have to solve. Um, this one I'll just subtract 1 on both sides. Boom, that cancels. And I get x is equal to 0 minus 1 is a minus 1. There's one answer. And over here, this is what I call a two-stepper. I have to get rid of two things, the two and the negative three. I'm gonna get rid of the negative three first by adding it. That cancels. 
I'm left with 2x on the left and 0 plus 3 is a 3 on the right. And I'm kind of running out of room here, so follow me over here. And now I'm going to take my 2x is equal to 3, and I'm going to divide off the 2. Because 2 over 2 is just 1x or x. And it's ugly, but that's my other answer, 3 halves. So those are my two answers. I highlighted them in purple, or circled them in purple. Negative one and three halves. And I won't bore you by plugging and chugging them back in like I did on part A, but they would both check. They'd give me the right answer. So that's factoring. Um, I went ahead and left this slide in here. This is actually uh, Pearson's PowerPoint. Um, uh, I made room back here so I could work it my way with lots of color. And then here's theirs, which is pretty much all in, you know, the same color, black with a little blue in there. But I, you can read through that later. It's the exact same thing that I did, both parts A and B. Okay, now we're going to look at the square root method. And the square root method only works when you have an equation that looks like this. Um, Earlier we had, they said ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And you'll notice that you had not only an x squared, but you also had an x. You don't have that here. This equation only has the x squared. This guy is missing. So really I just have like, you know, a something x squared and a something and it may or may not be equal to zero, they had it set equal to P. It's going to be something like X squared is equal to nine. Or they could give you X squared minus nine is equal to zero. It'll only have the X squared guy and the what, what's really called a constant, okay? And so that literally all you have to do, if you're solving for X, you need to get rid of the squared. Well, you do the opposite. Just like previous problems, when something was subtracted, I would add it to both sides. If something was multiplied, I divided it off both sides. Well, here something's being squared. So we're going to square it on both sides. And the square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 9 is 3. But remember, it's an x squared, so there's got to be two answers. So it's either a positive three or a negative three. My math lab may ask you to type it in with commas, like it'll be X is equal to, and then they'll have a, um, a empty box. So you'll type three comma negative three. Um, I haven't checked to see if, if there's a plus or minus button. If there is a plus or minus button, feel free to use it. But sometimes in the directions, it'll say, uh, write all your answers and separate them with a comma. So just do whatever the fine print says. So that's the square root method. Now, sometimes it's not a pretty square root. Like I just had a real pretty square root. I don't on this one. Here I have x squared is equal to five. So I'm gonna square root both sides. The square and the square root cancel each other out and you're left with X. Five is not a perfect square. And if I try to plug it in on my calculator, I'm gonna get a decimal. My math lab may simply say, leave your answer as a simplified radical. If it wants a decimal, they'll have to tell you to round off. So you still have to put plus or minus the square root of five. I can leave it like that. Or if they want a decimal, oh, let's see, five, where's the square root button? Do, 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 do. Haven't used this calculator in a while. Um, well, whatever the heck the square root of five is, where did it go? Oh, I'm gonna use the calculator I'm familiar with, sorry. 2.236. <laughs> what is it? 2.236. Thank you. 2.236, I'm assuming you rounded it off to the nearest something or other? Yes. Now, okay. Like I said before, just do whatever my math lab tells you to do. Now, part B here, draw a line. Um, when I first look at this, 
my first instinct is, oh my God, parentheses, get rid of them. Well, yeah, but because it's set up as an X minus two squared equals 16, that is in the form that they said on that previous slide where it said uh, X squared is equal to P. It's just, you've got more than just an X being squared. You can still square root both sides. That square root and this squared, they cancel each other out. See ya, bye bye now. So I'm left with X plus X minus two. Then on the other side though, the square root of 16, I have to remember it's either gonna be a positive or a negative four. That's because if you take positive four and square it, that's four times four, which is 16. But if you take negative four and square it, that's negative four times negative four, which is also 16. So there's two possible answers. Now, <laughs> I'm going to have to split this up and first I'm going to have to figure out, um, let's see, I'm going to take the X minus two and first I'm going to set it equal to the positive four. Then I'm going to take my X minus two and I'm going to set that equal to the negative four. And there's my two equations that I can solve for X because there should be two answers. Does that make sense? I hope, I hope. And then to solve this for X, I would simply add two to both sides. That cancels. And over here on this one, I would also add two to both sides. That cancels, but my answers will be different. The first one, X will be four plus two is six. And the second one, X will be negative four plus two is negative two. And you can check them. If you stick six right here, six minus two is a four, and then four squared is 16, which is what it said it should be. Or you can stick in the negative two. And you can say negative two minus two squared, negative two minus, two is negative four, but like I said before up here, negative four squared, that's also 16. So it does check. And that's called the square root method. And I did the same thing in the PowerPoint. I went ahead and just left the slides where they showed their explanation, just so you can see it. So that's that. And then the last concept is um, using the quadratic formula. Hey, did anybody go to um, Silver Creek High School? I did. Do you have Mr. Day? No, some of my friends did though. <laughs> Apparently he has a little song he sings for this. <laughs> but anyway, um, here it is again. It's the quadratic formula in the form of AX squared plus BX plus C is equal to zero. The one thing that factoring and the quadratic formula have in common is it has to be set equal to zero before you can solve it. Okay, it's gotta be set equal to zero. For factoring, you use that whole if A times B equals zero thing. And for the quadratic formula, you have to look at this and say, okay, whatever number is right here, that is my A. Whatever number is right here, that's going to be B. And then whatever number right here, that's going to be C. And I know they show um, an addition sign here, an addition sign there, but there could be subtraction signs. So if there's subtraction signs, take the, the subtraction as a negative. You could have like 3x squared minus 7x minus 8 equals 0. All right. So then A would be 3, B would be negative 7, and C would be negative 8. So you might be grabbing negative numbers. But the general definitions usually have just plus signs in them. Um, so 
the one method we didn't cover was something called completing the square. Um, and you're glad we didn't because it's not fun, but some crazy mathematician a long, 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 long time ago took, took this whole thing right here with the letters A, B, C, and X in it, no numbers, just those letters, and then completed the square on it. And when he was done, he had X on the left and it equaled that mess on the right. And they call that the quadratic formula. And all you have to do is know it and plug and chug the values of A, B, and C into it and then simplify it. So, um, it, oh, oh, oh yeah. Um, the other thing is, let me go back one slide. They said right here, forgot this part. Um, the B squared minus 4AC, which this right here, the B squared minus 4AC, that's the stuff that's underneath the radical. Um, that is what they call the discriminant. And you have to simplify B squared minus 4AC. You plug in the values for A, B, and C, follow order of operations, do the math, and then the last step is square root it. Well, if, if when you're done doing b squared minus 4ac, if it comes out to be less than zero, which is a fancy way of saying you got a negative number, then there's no real solution. You can't take the square root of a negative. If you try to do it in your calculator, you get an error message. That's because there's no number when you square it, you'll ever get a negative. If you take a positive and square it, it's a positive. If you take a negative and square it, it's a positive. It's impossible to get a negative. So um, there'll be a choice in my math lab where it'll be multiple choice at the bottom and choice B or C will be um, there is no solution. And that'll happen when B squared minus 4AC comes out to be negative, okay? If it's greater than or equal to zero, that means it's zero or positive, you're gonna get some answers. Now the next slide breaks it down even further because if it's actually equal to zero, then you're gonna get a repeated solution, meaning um, one of the answers will be five and the other answer will be five. It's just, they call it a double root. <coughs> Anybody remembers quadratic formulas, they actually are the graph of a parabola. Looks kind of like a smiley face, you know? And hey, I did a good job. I drew it right through that line. <laughs> when you solve for X, you're actually finding the two points where it crosses the X axis, okay? That is what you're gonna get for part one. You're gonna get two unequal real solutions when it's greater than zero. If it is equal to zero, your parabola is gonna look like this, where it literally sits right on the x-axis. The very bottom of the parabola is the only point that touches it. And that's why you get a repeated solution. There's only gonna be one answer there for that one. And then there is the third one, this one. And that's what I like to call a floater. That's when I have a parabola that does this. It's literally floating above the x-axis somewhere and it never touches it. So it'll have no x-intercepts. So that's basically what all that means. You're not gonna be doing any graphing in this section. You're just gonna be solving. So that's kind of a preview of something coming up to get you excited. Okay, so here's an example. Use the quadratic formula. All right, so when I look at it, let me go back and get that blue color again. There we go. All right, so the three right here, that is my A, because it's already, it's in the AX squared plus BX plus C equals zero form, okay? It is set equal to zero, I'm good, I need that. So A is three, B is that negative five. And then C is the positive one. Okay, now when I do this, 
Um, the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of, I think it's pop goes the weasel is the song, but I'm not a singer, so I ain't gonna do it. <laughs> but there it is. Now, when I do this, I always take out the letters and put parentheses in its place before I substitute. Because if I have negative numbers, I don't want to confuse my negative numbers with the subtraction signs that are already in the problem. So, let's see. Let's see. My B is here and here. So, my negative 5 goes here and here. My A's are here and here, so the three goes here and here. And then I only have one C, it's right there. So that's the one that goes right there. Okay, let me go back to my black pen. All right, I'm gonna move over to the left here. So X is gonna equal, now here I have a minus of a minus. A negative times a negative is a positive. So that becomes a positive five. Or you can think of it as taking away a negative. If somebody takes away a negative, isn't that really a positive thing? Like right now, I'd really wish somebody would take away all my debt because if somebody took away my debt, that'd be a really positive thing. Plus or minus the square root of, and then if I do, all this stuff. Now that I have to follow order of operations. Um, you might remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, the order of operations, which, is, or PEMDAS. Um, I changed it. I don't have a dear Aunt Sally. So I always ask people to please excuse my dumbass sister because I do have one of those. That was a joke. There you go. <laughs> Give me a little reaction. I like that. <laughs> Good job. I like that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Worked hard on that one. Nice. Um, <laughs> she doesn't appreciate it, but it's all right. <laughs> it actually made me laugh really loud. That's what I'm going to do myself. Thank you. <laughs> um, so parentheses would be first. Um, I have parentheses in here, but I put the parentheses there for the sake of the substitution. So I moved to exponents next. So the negative five squared, negative five times negative five is 25. And then skip over the minus and you go over to the four times three times one. What's four times three is 12. 12 times one is 12. Okay, and then that's all over the denominator. Two times three, that's six. So I'm gonna keep going. This is gonna be five plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 12 is 13 all over six. And I'm gonna guess that my math lab is gonna want you to leave it like this. 13 is the prime number and I can't simplify it. Um, maybe the example I have later will, but so that's your answer. That'll be a pain in the butt to type into my math lab, but I'm gonna show you some of that too. Um, in my video so you can see how to do it. All right, quadratic formula, and then here's just their example. And they wrote theirs out as two separate. If my math lab has that plus or minus button, I say use it. If they don't, you're gonna have to type it out like this. Sorry. Okay, and, oh, here's another one. Another one with the quadratic, quadratic, crot, quadratic formula. My problem with this one is it's not set equal to zero. So I'm going to, it's easier to solve it when your x squared is positive, which he is. So I'm going to subtract the 4x over. And when I subtract the 4x, he's going to have to go right in between here to put it in the right order. So that cancels. I'm going to have 3x squared, there's my subtract 4x, and then the plus 2 equals 0. Remember, it has to be in ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0 form in order for this to work. 
And then you can look at it and say, okay, there's A, A is a three. And here's B, B is a negative four. And C is the two. And then you grab the formula and plug it in. And I'm just gonna show my, neg my uh, it's negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared, oops. B squared minus four times A times C all over two times A. And then there's only one C, it was right here. And then my B's were here and here. This is color coding at its finest. I took a class, color coding 101. Yeah, it's one of them teacher classes they make you take along with paper, paper stapling and paper cutting 101. That was another joke. Okay, negative B. <laughs> and then this is my negative four. And then that's A and C and A. There you go. Sometimes it's easier to use highlighters. <clears throat> All right, let's see what we get on this mess. I got the double negative again, the minus a minus four, so that's a four, plus or minus, see if I can do all this in my head, negative four squared, that's 16 minus four times three is 12 times two is 24. Uh-oh, that's negative eight. I can actually just stop. There's no point in going further. You cannot take the square root of a negative eight, so therefore there is no solution on this one. Aw, makes me so sad. <laughs> All right, and then I'm guessing that, yep, here's their definition or their explanation. Now they just used the discriminant. I just was working the problem and, you know, found it that way. Okay, so are there any questions so far? Because no, at this good. point on, was that a question? No. Um, okay. I don't have any questions. Okay. From this point on, what I did is I just added in literal screenshots to my math lab. Um, uh, you can actually print off your homework in my math lab. And actually, I can probably, well, I don't want to jump around too much. Um, I'm going to show you that in that video also that I'm going to post when I figure out how to get it into. Ivy Learn, um, there's a way you can print off your homework so that you don't have to sit and stare at the computer the whole time if you don't want to. And when I printed it and I took a screenshot of it, it looked like this. So um, this is my math lab number two, and it says solve the following equation by factoring. And this equation right here, x squared minus 121. Um, that is another special type of factoring. Um, X squared minus 121 is called a difference of two squares. That's a difference of two squares. And the only way to factor it is to recognize it for what it is. There's no special magic way to do it. Um, this thing always factors into what they call binomial conjugates. Because your first term is an x squared, that means you only have one choice, x times x for first times first. And then your last term is this 121. That is actually a perfect square. 121 is 11 squared. So I'm gonna put an 11 here and an 11 there. The signs, however, one of them has to be a plus and the other one has to be a minus. So they almost look like identical twins, but not quite. They're more like fraternal because one's a plus and one's a minus. You got an X plus one and an X minus one, or you can say it's the good twin and the evil twin, but they're, they're called conjugates is what they are. And then once again, either you're, you're back to the fact that 
um, if a times b equals zero, then either the a is my zero or the b is my zero. So either the x plus 11 is equal to zero or the x minus 11 is equal to zero. And you know, after I've done these a million times, I don't even write this step out. I'm just, sometimes I just look at this and I'm like, okay, either that zero or that zero, which means that, whoops, this x right here, wouldn't that have to be a negative 11? Because negative 11 plus 11 would make it zero. And then this x would have to be a positive 11 because positive 11 minus 11 gives me zero. Over here, negative 11 plus 11 gives me zero. Sometimes I can just look at them. Even if it was like a, a 3x plus 2 times a 3x minus 2, when I look at these, this x right here, um, let's see. If that three were not there, let's say, let's see, let's say this three was not there, then wouldn't that X just be a minus two? Cause negative two plus two would give you zero. However, that three is there. So it's like right here, you're saying three X equals negative two. You'd have to divide off the three. So when I look at the other one, I'm seeing X is going to be, because it's a minus two, I need a plus two. And because it's times three, I need to divide by three. So X is two thirds, negative two thirds, positive two thirds. And this one actually, the, what the difference of two squares would have looked like on this one, it would have been a nine X squared minus four equals zero because you split the nine to be three X times three X and the four to be two times two. This only works with perfect squares. Um, if you forgot your perfect squares, you know, one squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared, six squared, seven squared, eight squared, nine squared, 10 squared, 11 squared, and 12 squared, 144. Maybe you remember those, maybe you don't. I don't know. All right, what's this is my math lab number three, um, solved by factoring. This is, this guy here, um, is what I call unfoilable. I'm gonna unfoil it. <laughs> that didn't sound right, did it? Unfoilable. It is, I can unfoil it, I can do it. Um, because it starts with a Z squared, that's got to be Z times Z. And then it ends with a negative 10. Now I got choices on this one because one times 10 is 10 and two times five is 10 but it's a negative. So I either have to have a negative one times a positive 10 or a positive one times a negative 10 or a negative two times a positive five or a positive two times a negative five. I've actually got four possibilities. However, you have to pick the one that is going to add up to a positive three Z. Because remember, whatever number, whatever number you put here is part of insides, and whatever number you put here is also part of outsides. So that's last times last, but you have to take into consider outsides and insides. So which pair is it going to be? It is going to be this pair. Negative 2 and positive 5 adds up to a positive 3. And it doesn't matter where you put them. You can put the negative two here and the positive five there or vice versa. But this is still equal to zero. And now I just look at my, my answers. Let me erase all this. I can stare at this and say, okay, this Z right here would have to be a positive two. And this Z right here would have to be a negative five.
And it looks like in my math lab, they're using these guys right here. They're called braces. Um, just type the answers in there. Just put two comma negative five. Yep, use a comma to separate answers as needed. All right. I'm gonna do it on time. We get done at 5.15, right? I can do it. Yeah. Okay, this is the one I was talking about earlier. The one I did was like 2x squared something or other, and I kind of unfoiled it, but it was a little difficult. The only time I really like to unfoil them is when you have a one right here in front of your x squared or your y squared. This one has a larger number, it's got a five. And when I do this type, I use what's called the AC method. I can remember being in high school and learning how to do this. And my teacher made us do trial and error. Oh my God, it took forever. It was ridiculous. And when I first started teaching, I found this method and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is so much easier. Uh, the AC method, remember that the five is actually A and the negative three is your C. You're going to take both the five and the negative three and you're gonna multiply them together. That's what you're gonna do. So I'm gonna take these and multiply five times negative three and that gives me negative 15. Are you with me so far? Yep. Now, I'm gonna look at factors of 15 and there's only two pairs, one times 15 and three times five. And it's a negative 15, so I have to place my signs correctly and I have to place them so that it will give me the negative 14 in the middle. And that's gonna be the first pair. I'm gonna need a positive one and a negative 15. This pair right here, you're going to literally replace the negative 14 with. What you're actually doing is putting back outsides and insides from the FOIL method. Come on, Penn. Okay, so I'm still gonna have the 5x squared first, and I'm still gonna have the negative three last. However, I'm going to replace the middle term of negative 14x with a positive 1x and a minus 15x. I literally take out negative 14x and put back positive 1x minus 15x. Because if you combined those, you know, when you do the FOIL method, if you remember FOILing, when you're done with first outside, inside, last, if outsides and insides are like terms, you combine them and get a middle term. So this is like putting them back. And then once you put it back, and I'm gonna recopy this again, all in one color, you're going to factor this by something called factoring by grouping. Okay, I need new colors for this. Give me a minute to switch my pens out. Let's go with a pretty red. And how about a purple? Okay. You're gonna put them in groups of two. I'm gonna grab the first two as one group and the last two as the second group. And you look at each group and ask yourself, what's the greatest common factor of each group? Well, from the first group, 5x squared and a 1x, the only thing that they have in common is an x. So I factor it out. On the back two, when I look at the negative 15x and the negative three, they both have a negative and they're both divisible by three. Now, if you have done this correctly, your parentheses should match. So when I take 5x squared and divide it by the x, I should be left with an x. No, a 5x, sorry, a 5x. Because x times 5x is 5x squared. 
when I take the one X and divide it by the X, I'm left with a one. And if you want to check yourself, just distribute back. X times five X is five X squared. X times a plus one is a plus one X. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take negative 15 X and divide it by negative three. That would be a positive five X. And then take negative three and divide it by negative three. A negative three divided by negative three is a positive one. And you can see that both sets of parentheses match. This is a 5x plus 1, and this is a 5x plus 1. That is your first factor. My first factor is a 5x plus 1. Your second factor is going to be made up of, ah, the x and the minus three. Those two basically are going to hook up and become your second factor. And this is still set equal to zero. Right here it was set equal to zero. It's still set equal to zero. I was just being a lazy teacher and not copying that down. And now it's factored. Did that make any sense whatsoever? Yep. Cool. And now I just look at it and I'm like, what are my two answers? Um, kind of ran out of room. <laughs> Follow me. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So my two factors were 5x plus 1 and x minus 3 equals 0. And if I just look at them, this x right here, isn't that just going to be 3? Because 3 minus 3 would be 0. This one, I got two steps to this. Because it's a plus one, I need a minus one. And because it's five times X, I would divide by five. It's gonna be a fraction, negative one fifth. Another F word in math, fractions. Why, I just threw a bunch of F words at you. Factoring, foiling, fractions. Just wait till we get to functions. <laughs> Another bad joke, okay. <laughs> All right, Arr, moving on, number five, okay. This one says, solve the following equation by factoring. Um, you might be like, well, isn't it already in factored form? No, it's not in factored form because you've got this plus sign right here between a set of parentheses and that 12. In order to be completely factored, it would have to have, you know, it would have to be like X and then parentheses and parentheses equals zero. We don't have that. We got that plus sign thrown in there. So we're going to have to do a little algebra on this uh, to get it to get it in what you know I'd call factor ready form. And step one would be getting rid of that parenthesis. So I am going to use the distributed property to get rid of parentheses. Um, distributing is actually un greatest common factoring. <laughs> it's like you're unfactoring. Let's see, x times x is x squared, and x times minus 7 is a minus 7x. That does not look like a very good squared. There we go. But then I still have the plus 12 equals 0. And hey, that's one of those um, trinomials that starts with a 1x squared, so I'm going to unfoil this. My first term is an x squared, so x times x is the only choice. Then I have to go to the back half, <clears throat> which is this positive 12. And that's gonna be last times last, but I've actually got several choices. It's either one times 12, <clears throat> two times six, or three times four. And you're looking for the pair that will add up to this negative seven in the middle. So that's going to be negative three and negative four. <clears throat> Remember these two things, when you take negative three times negative four, it should multiply to give you this guy. And when you take negative three and add it to negative four, it should add up to this guy. 
and then you found the correct factors. So this is going to be x minus 3 and x minus 4. And now it's in the if a times b equals 0, then either a is 0 or b is 0. So this x right here is going to be a 3. And this x right here is going to be a 4. And there's my two answers for my quadratic. Let's see, what other nasty problems did I find? I found a couple of nasty ones. Here's number six. Ew. OK, now <laughs> it says solve the following equation by factoring. I don't even, this is in the quadratic equation section. And I'm like, wait a minute. There's no x squared on this. It's not a quadratic. Oh, yes, it is. It's just a quadratic in disguise. My first issue for solving for x is there is an x in a denominator. That is a huge problem. We got to get his ass out of there. So <laughs> I am going to simply multiply by x. You guys remember with fractions how to cross cancel? Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um, and then don't forget what you do to one side, you gotta do to the other. Over here, it's, it's as if this is an x over one. And then you can go, hey, I'm gonna use this guy instead. I can cancel this x with that x, cross cancel out. And then all you're left with is 24. And the fraction is gone and the x is out of the denominator. But I got to come over here and distribute this x. So that's going to be 24x squared minus 55. x, sorry, don't forget the x, April. x goes to everybody. And there, look who showed up, Mr. x squared. So it's a quadratic. And I'm like, man, I got to set this equal to 0. They said I got to factor it. Oh, that's not nice. Oh, that's really not nice. <laughs> Okay, why did I choose to do this problem? I don't know. Oh my God. Okay, so we got 24x squared minus 55x minus 24 equals zero. Oh my God. Yeah, I'm definitely going to use the AC method on this one. Remember, I'm going to take 24 times the negative 24. I'm going to grab my calculator for that one. I don't know what 24 squared is. Some big ass number. 576. Oh, man. Is that negative? Yes. Which means I'm looking for one factor that's positive and the other factor that's negative. And they have to add up to 55. Well, I already found this is 24 times 24. That would be the bottom of the list. <laughs> the top of the list would be 1 times 576. But that only has a difference of 575. I'm looking for a difference of 55. Oh, this isn't going to be fun. All right, let's see. I got my calculator. 576 divided by 2. OK, that's 2 times 288. Uh, do you guys know how to figure out if a number is divisible by 3? There's this trick. If you take the 5 plus the 7 plus the 6, that adds up to 18. If 3 goes into 18, then 3 will go into 576. I have been using that forever. Yeah. Freaky! <laughs> <laughs> Again, it was one of them old mathematicians hundreds of years ago who had nothing better to do on a Friday night but mess around with numbers. Okay, so 3 goes in there 192 times. And let's see, this 4, 576 divided by 4. Oh, yeah. 4 goes in there, 144. Remember, as I'm doing this, one of these numbers has to be positive, and the other one has to be negative. So when I look at these pairs, I'm, I'm looking for the pair that has a difference of 55. I haven't found it yet, and I'm, the difference here is only 140, so i got a ways to go. That doesn't end in a five, so five doesn't work. Since both two and three go in there, six will work. 576 divided by six is 96. I'm getting warmer. Whoops, wrong color. I don't think seven works, but I'm gonna look for it. Nope, I got an ugly decimal on that one. 
576 divided by 8, 72. Uh, what's the difference between 8 and 72? It's 60 something or other. What about 9? Does 9? Oh, the trick, the trick that I was talking about up here, it also works for 9. Since 5, 7, and 6 adds up to 18, 9 goes into 18, 9 will also go into 576. I think this might be the pair. 64, and we have a winner. Oh my God, that took way too long, but it works. Um, I would need a positive nine and a negative 64. That adds up to this guy here, negative 55X. So this is gonna be 24X squared plus 9x minus 64x minus 24 equals zero. And now I got to factor by grouping. <laughs> so I'm going to put them in groups of two. Let's see, 24 and 9 are both divisible by 3. And x squared and x are both divisible by x. And then back here, negative 64 and negative 24 are both divisible by negative eight. That's it, eight. Okay, and when I divide, 24x squared divided by 3x would be 8x, and 9x divided by 3x would be three. I should get the same thing over here. 64x, negative 64x divided by negative eight would be a positive eight, sorry, x. And negative 24 divided by negative eight is a positive three. And I'm gonna have to erase my um, mess over here, I think. <sighs> okay, so do you guys notice that my sets of parentheses match. You would literally factor out an 8x plus 3. You, that's what you're factoring out. So you're going to get one factor is the matching 8x plus 3. And then the other factor, let me erase this, sorry. The other factor is the, this three X and this minus eight, that's what's gonna go here. The three X minus eight equals zero. Okay, so this X right here is gonna be a, Subtract three divide by eight, negative three eighths. And this one would be an add eight divide by three for this x. You have to add eight and then divide by three to get x by itself. So those are my two answers. Okay, that one was not fun. Okay. Let's go do more of them then. <laughs> I don't think so. Let's just, that was all the factoring stuff. <laughs> now we're back to just using the square root method. These are much easier. Um, all I have to do, since, since you have this x squared thing by itself on the left, just square root it off. I've got a 4y plus 6, all of that squared. Square root it. The square root and the square cancel each other out, so you're left with just the 4y plus 6. On the other side, when you take the square root of 36, you have to realize, yes, that's 6, but there's actually two possibilities, the positive and the negative. So here's where your two equations come into play. Either the 4y plus 6 is the equal to the positive 6, or the 4y plus 6 is equal to the negative 6. So what I did was I considered the positive value here for this one and I considered the negative value for this one. 
And now I just gotta, you know, gotta work on my algebra skills here. I gotta subtract six, cancels. I get four y is equal to zero. And then four goes into zero, zero times. So I get y is equal to zero. Aw, oh, man, I wish it had x in it. Because if it had been x, I would have gotten x is equal to zero. And then I could have told you that, that that's my favorite answer because it's hugs and kisses. <laughs> you know, get it? X's and O's, hugs and kisses. OK. Over here, <laughs> these are the jokes, people. All right, so 4y equals negative 6 minus 6 is negative 12. And then I'd have to, on this one, divide by 4. So that cancels out. And I get negative 3. So 0 and negative 3. 0 is allowed to be an answer. So many times people get an answer of 0 and they're like, oh my god, I did something wrong. We're not discriminating against zero. He's a number two. I know he's the only number out there that doesn't have an, an opposite, you know, like three and negative three and five and negative five. He's kind of a loner, but he's still a number two and he has feelings. Okay. And then this one wants to use the quadratic formula. I've done enough of those. Let's see, what's 25? Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. I'm looking at my clock over here and I'm at 514 right now. So I don't think I need to do another quadratic formula. I think that one's okay. And this one's a nightmare. How about I make a video of this one and post it for you so you can watch it at your leisure. Does that sound like a plan? Sounds good. Okay, cool. Can you go back to number three real fast? Go back to where? 23. Slide 23? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Is there a question on it or you just hadn't finished copying? No, I just had to finish the right side of it real fast and I'm done now. Okay. Does anybody have any questions on that? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Can I unshare my screen? Stop sharing. Okay. Um, Jared, are you in your car? <laughs> Jared, <laughs> he's in his car. Hope you weren't driving while you were listening to me. Um, no, I'm about to walk into work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Be safe. All right. Um, my math lab is open. Um, let me show you that again real quick. Where's my math lab? Share. Okay, so this is section 1.2. If you click on it, there's only 16 questions. Um, and I am going to make another video. I call it my how to video, how to navigate through my math lab. If you've never used it before, if you know, if you've used it before, you probably already know it and don't need to watch it. So, but I want to make one for you for this class. So you can see it and um, post it. If I can figure out how to post it in this canvas or Ivy learn, sorry, it's called canvas at IUS. It's the exact same program, but they call it Ivy learn. So, um, I am done with this and I will see you all again um, Monday. Yeah, Monday at four. If anybody needs to chat with me right now, um, let me stop sharing this again. You can um, ask me questions now if you want. And if you're I have a question. good to go, you can log out and I'll see you later. See you then. See you on Monday. Okay. Who's got the question? Um, so is that due in September, the math lab? Yes, I had it set for, I think because we were behind, I gave you all an extra week because the first week, um, I got it set for like September 6th. Yeah, I think it was the 6th. The Sunday night, yeah. I wasn't sure how long I was going to, how long it was going to take to get, get in here and get going. And I didn't want to, you know, stress y'all out too much. So I gave you a little extra time, but usually it's due each week. So, okay. Yep. 
Anybody else got any questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh -huh. uh, it might be just redundant, but um, about accessing the math lab itself. Mm -hmm. um, like, would we have to uh, purchase access to it or no? I was told that you didn't that, um, let me show you again. Um, let, me, let me share my screen real quick. Oh, okay. Um, You're supposed to oh, I, I can't. Um, yeah, or am I, can I? Um, but. Access? Wait, here, all participants, who can share? Oh, okay. Um, now will it let you share? Yeah. Okay, so on this right here, um, yeah, you said to on. click on this link, right? Well, I clicked on it and it brought me to a page like this and I registered and then it wants me to do something like this. Okay, can you go and back to the, to the Ivy Learn page? Yeah. Um, did you click on the link that says my lab and mastering to the left? Oh, oh, right my bad. Uh, yeah. It, it was this link, my bad. Um, hold on. I guess it's taking a second because of screen share, but yeah. um, it was the yellow link that I clicked on, not the syllabus. I was looking at the wrong thing. Um, but it still brought me to uh, this one. Uh, I'm mastering right there. That's the one you're supposed to click on. Yeah. Uh, let me stop sharing for a second, see if it'll load. Okay. Uh, with the with the my lab stuff with the, with your book that you buy, you get an access code to it. Okay. So yeah, I bought okay. my book today, and I was confused on that too. And then I looked, and it was a like a little pamphlet type thing that had your access code on it. Because okay. I've had people that are already in it, and nobody has asked me for a course ID. And boy, we haven't set it up at IUS. Also, you don't need the instructor's course ID, but I shared it with you just in case. It's it's in an announcement. The announcement I set out today before class, if you need that course ID. But yeah, there should be an access. Uh, I saw that. Okay, so we do need the textbook. I think you just need the access code because there's an electronic oh, um, copy of the textbook in my math lab. Uh, you, can't, you can't buy just the access code. I tried today. You had to buy the whole book. Really? Yeah. Okay. You may have made some changes since I've been there. So I used to only make students buy the, the access code, but that could be the Pearson company doing it too. I'm not in charge of that kind of stuff anymore. <laughs> My life is a lot less stressful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> how much is this book? It's a big old book. Uh, is the, it loose, the loose leaf one that I got today was $224. Oh Shoot. Then the hard the hardback ones like two eighty, and then just the online ones like one twenty six. Huh? Are you buying it through the bookstore? Yeah, I bought it through the bookstore. Okay. Huh. I'm gonna have to ask about that and write myself a note and say, "What's up with that? When did we make this change?" Okay. Oops, any other questions? No, uh, it says that I could get like access to the book, I think for like 18 weeks, would that be fine? Free? Uh, no, not free, but like for a lesser price than like forever or like a year or something like that. Yeah, that's up to you. Like the class, how long is the class? Um, like 16 weeks? 16 weeks. 16 weeks. Okay. Yep. 16 weeks. Okay. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. Well, I'm going to end the class then. All right, bye. Bye.